When you set out to pick out a new skill, a new hobby, or a new career path, you want to become as good at that as possible, to master that craft. In the realm of data science, the mecha is working for Fang. Or is it Mang now? Whatever. We'll call it working in big tech. And the question that's clawed at me lately is what does it take to be somebody who operates at that level? Somebody who's recognized as good enough to work for one of these companies? I don't have the answer yet, so I reached out to two people who do. The first is Lorenzo, who is a lead data analyst with Amazon, and Priya, who is a senior data scientist with Uber, hoping they would get us a few steps closer to solving this puzzle. My first question was simple. Whenever a job goes up at any of these companies, it seems like there's already thousands of people who are waiting with their CV in hand. So how can we make ourselves a special data scientist who gets their chance? For me, networking and specifically referrals is just uh, maybe the number one priority, uh, especially if you're looking for a new job. I would apply to a company without referrals uh, only if there is no other options. You're probably going to uh, kind of lose your chance if you apply to a company without the referrals because yeah. the referrals will put your CV in front of the recruiting team yeah. 100%. So there is no chance that your CV is like, you know, left in a email or yeah, whatever. It's like one of two things. The first is that someone gets their master's degree and goes directly to a thing. Like recruiting out of college, the easiest, most straightforward way, if you know you're going to college, like work as hard as you can to network and try to know, like get to know someone who's already at Google or at Meta or at Uber because it's really about who you know because at the end of the day, an interview panel is going to be like, it's gonna be people you're gonna work with anyways. So if you know someone who's there, you can learn from someone in the company and that person can refer you. You just have a higher chance of like standing out in a panel where you, you were already referred to be there. Getting in front of like someone and getting to the interview is the hardest part, but once you're already there, like the way you get there is networking. Like it's literally not applying. It's just knowing someone there and getting referrals, especially at these big companies. Like that's the number one way. Okay, so now we've at least gotten our CV in front of the hiring managers, but what does the interview process look like? Getting in into Fang uh, is pretty scary at the start. So um, uh, is a big comp like these are massive companies, so they have a very structured um, application process, interviewing process. So for me, it was um, it was uh, I would say a bit uh, like less hard for me to apply and get into like the first interview because yeah. um, I use referrals. Um, so yeah, the, the initial step was okay, but then when they told me, you know, this, like when they described me the, the whole uh, interviewing process, uh, yeah, as I said, that's very overwhelming. So I had to do nine interviews wow. to, to get the final offer. So yeah, I actually have a, a video talking about the whole process, but in a, like briefly, you know, I had a call with the recruiting, uh, recruiting person at Amazon, then the hiring manager, I had five, uh, behavioral, uh, interviews. Yeah one technical interviews, um, and then the final kind of, uh, you know, the final call, um, yeah. also again to meet other people in the team. And so, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty tough, a <laughs> long process. Yeah. In terms of the technical interview, I'm very curious, uh, is that mainly Python SQL? How hard is it? Yeah. So I guess, uh, that really depends on the, on the role. So my role was more towards, uh, data analytics, yeah. uh, rather than data science. So for me, it was like a uh, SQL based uh, technical interview. Yeah. So um, the, the format of the, of the interview on the interview obviously depends on the company. But um, for me, it was uh, having a person on the call checking what I was doing with SQL, which is also quite stressful and uh, yeah. overwhelming. Um, but yeah, it was uh, basically what I had was kind of a list of uh, SQL questions based on a data set that uh, I was uh, provided with. Yeah. And then yeah, it was like, you know, we had, uh, I think one hour. Um, and obviously, you know, the more questions I was going through the, the better, because yeah. obviously, you know, it starts at beginner level, and then each question is more kind of advanced. Yeah. Um, which is kind of good, because you know, you just start writing your first queries, but you know that you know, you got yeah. that. And then obviously, you know, uh, then it becomes a bit more, more tough. Yeah. But I wanted to dig deeper. Most people who do join that application process will have a decent level of technical ability. So what are some special skills we can bring to the table as data people to separate ourselves, to give ourselves an X factor? We all know the tech skills that is required to be a data analyst or data scientist. Yeah. So what I, uh, what I suggest is usually 
to have the uh, T-shaped uh, skill set in mind. Having the horizontal part of the T is uh, having this base of knowledge of what we need to do for our roles. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a data analyst, data scientist, so kind of that foundation. Yeah. But then, but then the the vertical part is something that you really, um, you know, you really uh, excel or something that makes you special. So you know, uh, and that is up to you. So you know, it can be, for example, really excelling data visualization. Or it can be really um, excelling in uh, ETL or building a data pipeline. So that's something that you need to choose. But you have to like I like to think in uh, in this way. So instead of you know mastering uh, ten skills because yeah. we know that for data analysts and data scientists we use a lot of tools. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to master all of them, having still that foundation, so kind of that proficiency basic level, but then really like. Um, mastering at least like one or a couple of them you really need to focus on your like your um communication skills like you need to know how to present things in a business context because you're at, at the end of the day at these big companies your stakeholders are actually going to be non-technical people so a lot of non-technical people are going to be on your panel after you pass algorithms it's all about business impact and translating all of that business impact like all of the complex data science models that you use and like all the complex features, the outputs, they all need to be translated in a very easy way. Like you can't show like a matrix and you can't talk about linear algebra. You have to have like very easy to understand business, like um, I guess terminology to explain uh, your conclusions and stuff. Both interesting answers, but a word I had expected to come up is domain knowledge. So how important is that? Having the business knowledge, domain knowledge is absolutely key, especially now with uh, uh, AI tools that make it even more accessible to other to other people to uh, get those technical skills in place. Mm -hmm. So and, and also like that is the skill that will ultimately uh, gives that kind of extra value in uh, in your own. So absolutely, um, you know, if you're able to, uh, you know, apply to, for example, a specific department inside the fund, having that kind of prior experience that is specific for uh, you know that department it can be for example marketing so you know if you want to work within marketing and amazon and you have a background in marketing you can obviously use that to to demonstrate that you know you have that domain knowledge yeah and obviously you know this is something that really again could uh, make you stand out among you know another candidate that maybe doesn't have that kind of uh, prior knowledge so absolutely and I think even like going forward in uh, kind of the, in the next years, especially with uh, the this AI uh, development that we're seeing, um, that would be like having that business knowledge and domain knowledge, that would be the thing that will definitely make you a you know, better data analyst or data scientist. As someone who is on hiring panels for analysts right now, domain knowledge is so important actually because analysts are more business oriented they're more, more business driven they're using the outputs of our data science models to present something to the business and do some analysis on that right and provide recommendations so when you're providing yeah. recommendations you need to have industry knowledge you need to know what you're talking about and you need to use business driven terminology and metrics for that industry so for an analyst it's much harder, I think, like crossing domains because of that business yeah. nature of their work. For us, like data scientists, I think it's easy because at the end of the day, data and modeling are never going to change. You like you, it's never going to change. Like you're going to have to learn a lot about the new industry. But I mean, your work, your day to day is probably going to be pretty similar. Interestingly, from both of their answers, it seems that as an analyst, domain knowledge is much more fundamental. So if you have amazing domain knowledge, that can truly be a differentiator. As a data scientist, it seems more like a nice to have. And if you're strong enough in that realm, it can still set you apart, but it's not quite as important as it is for an analyst. And to be honest, that's something that I've noticed in my day to day as well at work. Whenever we're hiring for an analyst, domain knowledge is much more important than it is for scientists. So at this point, we know how to stand apart before the application and during the interview. But once we're in, what are the best and worst parts of working in big tech? For me, it's really an internal feeling of being part of this uh, kind of group of people, part of the, this kind of uh, Amazon and fan companies more in general, which is something that is very important for me because I'm 
kind of very ambitious guy. And so I tend to forget to kind of, you know, stop and cherish like the achievements that I, that I have so far. So, um, uh, yeah, this is kind of a good feeling that I have whenever I step in the office and whenever I, you know, feel part of this environment is really like something that motivates me and gives me a lot of satisfaction. So that is, uh, one of the best part for me of being part of a fan. The, the worst part is probably, um, I'm finding a lot of, um, maybe slow bureaucracy in the company, which is obviously, you know, expected in, uh, in big companies. Yeah. Um, and for example, you know, that can, uh, influence your, uh, your career progression. So for example, you know, I'm thinking if you are even in a more senior role, if let's say you do an outstanding, uh, work, you know, amazing, um, progress and, um, you know, really you can see like everyone can see what you do in the company, even if you have outstanding results then um, you still have to, you know, go through the whole promotion process, let's say. So yeah. um, that is maybe, you know, a kind of a drawback of being part of a fund because, yeah, there is this kind of bureaucracy and uh, and uh, sometimes a very long process that, you know, uh, it's not like you have to do like what everyone does. So yeah. it's not about, you know, being necessarily special or anything. It's just about, you know, mm -hmm things working this way in the company. So that's, that's the way we do. And so that's what you have to go through. The main part is when it takes too long to build out data science models because of just generally like hierarchical structures at large tech companies. This is why, honestly, I think everyone should go to a large tech company for the benefits I mentioned before, like internal mobility, like, um, just name recognition, but Honestly, you want to make a big impact, like a super big impact quickly, like go to a startup. You know what I mean? I feel like being at Uber, it's it's fantastic. The biggest con is that there's so many people like you're going to get lost in the amount of people that are there, the politics. And honestly, I'm so lucky. I love everyone I work with. Truly, I have a great team. I'm very lucky, though. That doesn't happen yeah. to everyone. And if you're in a team where upward mobility is difficult, there's like a hierarchy, someone is for some reason has a vendetta against you, which like honestly happens. Like tech people have vendettas. Like, I don't know why, but I've seen it in the past, like never targeted towards me, but you can always work with people who don't have your best interests at heart. And you're working with more people at big tech companies like this there's more, um, there's more chance for other people to get seen for your work, mm. if that makes sense. So is all of this worth it? I think it is worth it because you get the ins and outs of like all parts of the business. Like I have the opportunity to potentially apply to like other sides of Uber and like they're very open with you moving across the company. And I think Google is like this, Meta is like this. They want to retain talent. So of course, getting here is the hardest part, but once you're here, there's opportunity to grow if you put in the effort and if you're a little lucky, you know what I mean? Like, it's not just about how much, how hard you work. It's also a little bit about luck, who your manager is and so on. But I will say once you're here, there are benefits in terms of like internal mobility. Like, let's say you don't want to do data science and you want to do data engineering or data analysis, or you even want to go to software it's much easier for you to make that change internally because you can just slack the hiring manager. Be like, hey, I saw you posted this. I'm on this team. My manager would love to talk to you about my work. I'm looking to transition. Can you help me or can you refer me to another role potentially? And I think that that mobility is very, it's very helpful because right now I'm on Uber ads, but I do have the potential one day if I want to, to go to a full applied science team where I only work with other people like me. And I have that opportunity if I don't want to be the only, you know, data scientist here on yeah. Uber ads. So it's like, that's by far the biggest pro. And the second is just, it's easier to get interviews, which sucks. Like, I don't think that's fair. But when you're at like a, a company where everyone knows the name, people are just 
more likely like you have a higher probability of just getting um offers from other co similar companies like right now we're interviewing and i see a lot of resumes that are big tech company resumes right so i would say just in terms of the name it is worth it the pay is good but i think you can find that elsewhere also i don't think that it's only google or only matter or only uber that pay well like you can find that at a startup you just have to look so I think uh, it definitely met my expectations. So, uh, you know, in terms of like what we discussed before, in terms of the recognition, the prestige of being in a, in a fund, the obviously the total compensation, uh, working with amazing people. So all of that uh, met the expectations. So I would say uh, it's, uh, it's worth it. And it's worth it for me, not only from a work perspective, so internally in the company, mm -hmm. but also from a kind of, let's say, external perspective. So... I'm talking about things like other opportunities that can arise because you are part of this company. And these are things that actually maybe um, I was not even aware of. So, you know, there are people maybe messaging me on LinkedIn saying, uh, you know, they start the conversation saying, uh, you know, we know that you work at Amazon. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can, you know, do, a, I don't know, like a mentorship for other, like, I don't know, other colleagues that we have in the company, or maybe it could be, um, you know, just... Again, tell us about your experience, maybe something with you as well. So, uh, you know, obviously there is a lot of interest for this company. So um, if you're interested, there are other stuff that you can do that are still connected with being part of a fund that maybe you uh, didn't expect before, but yeah. still part of this whole experience. I, for one, feel even more energized after having this discussion with Priya and Lorenzo. So guys, don't forget to check out their channels because they'll go even more in depth on all of these different elements. And I'll link them down in the comments as well. The channel also now has an Instagram at datanash1, so give me a follow over there and check out my newsletter where I'll give you other insights I got from these interviews that couldn't make it into the main video. If you did enjoy this video, check out this one where I explain the worst part about being a data scientist and how to get better at it.